Hello and welcome to another edition of Out of the Blue. I'm Mike Browning. Once again, MTSU faculty and alumni were among those nominated for the Grammy Awards. Winners were announced on February 12th. The 54th Grammy Awards nominations included nine alumni and or former students from the College of Mass Communication. Lady Annabellum's third album, Own the Night, garnered Hillary Scott a second Best Country Album Grammy. Scott was an MTSU recording industry major. 1980 alumnus Clark Schleicher won a Grammy for engineering the same album. Other categories that featured MTSU trained students included Best Country Song, Best Contemporary Christian Music Album and Song, and Best Country Duo Group and Solo Performances. MTSU attracts plenty of prominent guest speakers, but it's not often that the university is graced with a visit from a retired justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Sandra Day O'Connor delivered a lecture and open discussion as part of the university's Wyndham Lecture Series in Liberal Arts. Justice O'Connor grew up on a cattle ranch and became the first woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court after President Reagan nominated her in 1981. The retired justice is currently active in promoting civics education through a web-based education project, iCivics.org. Another prominent guest speaker to the campus challenged aspiring journalists to remember that democracy depends on getting the facts straight. Pulitzer Prize winning columnist Leonard Pitts delivered a lecture as part of the Sigenthaler Chair of Excellence in First Amendment Studies. Now for a taste of MTSU arts. Tucker Theater recently showcased actors from the London stage with three special performances of Shakespeare's comedy Twelfth Night. Here's a glimpse of what you may have missed. Overweening rogue. Oh, Pitts! Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. How he jets under his advanced clues. Light, I could so beat the bone. Peace, I say! <laughs> While on campus, the talented performers interacted with students in the classroom. Be sure to join us next month as we hear from the talented actors themselves about performing Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. When it comes to talent, MTSU can boast of its scholarly faculty offering their expertise to honor students in this spring's Honors Lecture Series. The 12 week we series on prison today, writings like opened up with a lecture from English uh, professor Dr. Philip Phillips who shared his scholarly research on Roman philosopher Boethius. Dr. Amy Kaufman provided insights into the writings of Sir Thomas Mallory, and political science professor Rob McDaniel lectured on the English origins of American liberty with the works of John Lilburn. A special honors lecture, Lead Belly, by English professor Dr. Mark Jackson, is scheduled for Tuesday, April 3rd. The series continues through April 9th. Since 1996, MTSU has honored unsung heroes of Middle Tennessee's African-American community during Black History Month. Three honorees were recognized for their community service during the 16th annual Unity Luncheon. The honorees here today had their little light, their torches, and they were not afraid to let it shine. Miss Olivia Murray Woods, the first African-American to enroll at MTSU as an undergraduate student, which was in the Department of Elementary Education. I understand Ms. Woods proudly boasts being only nine years younger than this institution. Mrs. Mary C. Scales, who was Dr. Bonner's sixth grade teacher and she's still afraid of her. She was the first African-American faculty member to be hired in an academic unit on the campus, which was the Department of Education. I understand there are several members of her sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha, to share in this occasion with her today. And Mrs. Thanartic, I knew I was going to mispronounce it. She's been practicing with me all the afternoon. Ms. Ellis, the first African-American departmental executive aide which was in the Department of Economics and Finance. And I learned today, the only job she just, she had, she, her whole professional career has been at MTSU and she just retired four years ago. You ladies are trailblazers and your work, your perseverance, your determination, your mere presence are an accomplishment deserving of this honor today. To nominate an unsung hero for 2013, visit www.mtsu.edu.aahmunityluncheon. 
As 61 scholars from across Tennessee, including MTSU, presented scientific research to Tennessee lawmakers in the annual Posters at the Capitol. Now, this year, MTSU was represented by seven innovative student presenters. Posters at the Capitol is the result of countless hours of impressive student work designed to change lives in human sciences. Each year, the MTSU College of Basic and Applied Sciences organizes the event to promote student research. Daniel Bonnier, I'm a physics major at MTSU and I'm studying quantum information theory. I'm a biology major. I'm doing the biophysics research project with um, sickle cells. I'm working with Dr. Lorenzo from the physics department. My name is Courtney Shaw. My undergrad research project was the relationship between intimate partner violence and mental health status among Tennessee high school students in Tennessee. And my major is community and public health with a primary focus in health education. And my minor is health and human performance. My long term goal is to start a nonprofit organization for first time pregnant moms in the city of Memphis, Tennessee to decrease infant mortality rates. The Dean of the MTSU College of Basic and Applied Sciences, Tom Cheatham, organized the first Tennessee Posters event back in 2005. In our alumni spotlight this month, we present Don Keaton, class of 61. After law school, he worked in Wilson County government and for Cracker Barrel. These days, as he has for 11 years, his primary job is one of the more peculiar but necessary jobs in all of Tennessee. As Chief Sergeant of Arms for the Tennessee Senate, Keaton is the key man in charge of carving order out of chaos on Capitol Hill. One of the main things that, uh, of course, we do is I mean, keep people from just wandering in, which uh, they, they have good intentions. You'll have tourists that will want to just walk in while you're in session. And, of course, there's no windows on the door, so they have no way of knowing or what, what's going on there. And uh, another thing that we do is, of course, make sure the senators are aware if they have a bill pending. Instead of the senator sitting there in the committee room for an hour, maybe in, in excess of an hour when they need to be in their office uh, returning calls or whatever, uh, we will, of course, keep up with those bills, uh, what senator is sponsoring them, and then we will give them a call, hopefully a heads up, maybe five, ten minutes, hopefully, let, let them, their staff know that th their bill is coming up real shortly, or if they are toward the lo last of the session, there seems to be more of a tendency for uh, their uh, constituents to call on them and express their interest in a bill pro or con. And so a lot of times they get to be prisoners almost in their own office and they can't escape. And they're trying to get out of there and trying to be nice to people, but yet uh, you, we just have to go in there and say, Senator, you're needed in the uh, hearing room. One of our main duties is to make sure the senators get their money for their per diem. And that's the money they need for lodging, for food, et cetera, and traveling, and of course for gasoline, which is a big, which is a big thing nowadays. But we have to sign off on a, the, them being president. They don't just automatically get this money. If they do not uh, uh, come into the office, into Nashville, and uh, attend the committee meetings, et cetera, whatever their assignment is, then uh, they don't get paid. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I am committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue. This is not just a recording studio. This is not just a flight school. This is not just a university.
This is MTSU, home of Tennessee's best. In our cover story this month, we honor a man who has served MTSU, Rutherford County, and the state of Tennessee with great distinction. From his years of service in the 1960s and 70s under MTSU President Melvin G. Scarlett to his more recent service in the university's Office of Community Engagement, John Hood has provided a lifetime of service and support to MTSU. John Hood, quintessential statesman, retired from the Tennessee General Assembly after 12 years in November 2008. His countless contributions to his district and Rutherford County are unquestioned, but Hood was a public servant to the Murfreesboro Rutherford County community long before he joined the state legislature, and his service continues even to this day. There's hardly anyone you can bring up in this community that John can't tell you a lot about their family and their background. It has always been an interesting part of John Hood to me is learning about uh, the history of the families in this community from him. Born in Rutherford County, he attended Critchlow Grammar School and Central High School, class of 1949. He later graduated from MTSU in 1954 with an undergraduate degree in social sciences and later a master's degree in education. Back in the 1940s when Hood was growing up, Murfreesboro's population was less than 8,000. It's not a stretch to say that what Hood did after gaining his education had a lot to do with the regional area's growth to become one of Tennessee's largest population bases. John Hood, he, he sets the bar really high. Uh, recently we um, we were at the graduation at MTSU and John was sitting next to me and, and um, uh, I didn't realize John was 83 years old. And um, he had, uh, I think he ran two miles that morning. After graduation and two years in the military, 1954 to 56, Hood went on to work at Samsonite when it first opened in 1960 and spent five and a half years there as a personnel manager. He then went on to work at MTSU for the first time, devoting 10 years to the university, first as a director of development and later as administrative assistant to President Melvin G. Scarlett. It was just the start of a long and prosperous relationship for MTSU, as Hood began a lifetime of service and support to the university. I had the opportunity, even before I became president of MTSU, and I work at the Board of Regents of working with John and just knew about his dedication, his commitment, and his uh, just great interests uh, in the education of the citizens of the state. Now, here's John Hood. Thank you very much, Dana Harris, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the music of Johnny Long and his orchestra. Hood's public figure is perhaps rooted in the work he did in local radio at both WGNS from 1948 to 1954 and WMTS from 1960 to 1966. One highlight of many was when he got to cover the visit of General Douglas MacArthur, whose wife Jean Marie Faircloth was from Murfreesboro. Hood also interviewed J.C. Penney on his two visits when the new store was being built and opened in Penney Plaza. Just recently I was at WGNS radio and I was reading some of the old newspaper articles on the, on the wall there, and it had um, John interviewing uh, General MacArthur's wife, and I was like, wow, look at how, I'm not saying how old he is, but just way back in the day like that. So John brings just a wealth of knowledge and, and just credibility and influence to this community. And in the Tennessee legislature, he served as a member of the powerful Finance, Ways, and Means Committee, the Education Committee, the Higher Education Subcommittee, and as Vice Chair of the Calendar and Rules Committee. He also worked with several organizations to create an awareness of the issues involving child abuse. When John was uh, National President of Exchange in 1981, uh, he brought together 
uh, the whole country as far as fighting child abuse prevention. As a lawmaker, he is credited with proposing bills in 2007 to enable growth counties like Rutherford to receive more state funding for local education under the basic education program, something people on the Hill at the time said would never happen. Under his leadership, he uniquely positioned MTSU to progress to becoming the comprehensive university it is today. After 12 years in the legislature, Hood decided not to seek re-election and instead rejoined MTSU in the newly created Office of Community Engagement and Support. The office supports the university's overall mission as it relates to addressing the ever-growing needs of both MTSU and the surrounding community at large. A hallmark of Hood's second stint at MTSU has been pushing for a new science building. Well, John has been really one of the uh, central um, figures in, in opening the doors uh, for me and also the uh, faculty and staff to really present the case of the critical need uh, for the science building. Whether as a radio broadcaster, MTSU official, banking representative, or local volunteer, John Hood literally has a lifetime of service to Murfreesboro and Rutherford County, always serving as a voice to promote and foster improvement to the community. Hood was recently honored by the Murfreesboro City Schools Foundation. Few in the MTSU community have done more to support the university than this native of Murfreesboro. We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more nationally recognized as an affordable quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best. The Blue Raiders men's basketball team claimed the Sun Belt East Division title with a home win over Florida Atlantic before a national audience on ESPN and became the winningest team in MTSU men's basketball history with a 24th win of the season. Before wins over UALR and FAU at home, MTSU defeated rival Western Kentucky 72-64 at Murphy Center. In that game, LaRon Dendy poured in a career-high 26 points and 14 rebounds for his fifth double-double of the season. As of February 22nd, Dendy had six double-double. Yes, he's one of those guys in our league, you know, those guys don't come around in our league a ton. At least we hadn't had him in a while. If he's competitive and plays like that with that much energy and emotion in the second half, he, he's hard to handle. He has maturity too, he's an older guy. In defeating UALR, MTSU notched its fifth game of shooting 60% or better from the field. The Blue Raiders closed the regular season with a record of 25 and 5 overall and 13 and 2 in the Sun Belt with eyes on March Madness. 
And the Lady Raiders continued on a roll in February, extending their winning streak to 18 games and improving their record to 26-5 and overall and 16-0 and in the Sun Belt. It's the Lady Raiders' fourth straight East Division title. In a victory over Western Kentucky at the Murphy Center, junior Courtney Jones broke the single-season three-point record, surpassing Sandy Brown, whose mark had previously stood since 1988. With six trays that night, Jones lifted her season total to 90 points, and as of this taping, had 104 points from three-point land. She ranked number two in the country for three-pointers. The Blue Raiders opened up the 2012 baseball season by bouncing back from a 7-3 loss to Kansas with an extra inning 3-2 victory over St. Louis, and then went on to sweep Ohio in a three-game series at home. In a 4-1 win, Jonathan Sisko pitched six innings, letting up just one run, striking out seven. Justin Guidry and Hank LaRue had RBI singles for the Blue Raiders. The Blue Raider baseball program held its 39th annual Groundhog Day luncheon at the Murphy Center with a unique speech from head coach Steve said, Peterson. After last season, we got the biggest chip on our shoulder from the way things went, and you better, better listen to the message that you're going to need a chip on your shoulder too. I already see a better team chemistry this year and people that are, and players that are determined to work harder this season. Outfielder Justin Guidry is an all Sun Belt preseason pick, coming off a 341 batting average last season. And third baseman Hank LaRue, 306 average and 34 RBIs last year, is also a member of the all Sun Belt preseason team. MTSU is picked eighth in the Sun Belt preseason poll. But the last time the Blue Raiders were picked eighth in 2009, they went on to win the Sun Belt championship with a 44 and 18 record. Finally, on Out of the Blue, here's Dr. Bob Pondillo with some provoking thoughts on how we all need to work a little harder. So I walk in on breakfast one morning not long ago and I see my then still in high school teenage son, sullen, hunched over a bowl of Cap'n Crunch with his hoodie, looking like a punked out medieval monk. So I say to him, uh, what's up? And my son scowls, life sucks, then you die. Well, I was hard pressed to argue with the dear boy, of course, then he says, Sadly, why? Why? It seemed to me my kid had, had hit upon a real philosophical dilemma, and given my profession, I saw this as a teachable moment I ought not let slip by. But what was the lesson, if any, I could teach this child given his existential pain? He had stumbled upon a real doozy of a question that philosophers for centuries have contemplated. So I pulled up my chair and asked, you think of yourself as a seeker of wisdom, don't you? And he grunts, and I took that as a yes, of course, and said, well, what you may be experiencing is a sense of confusion and a little twinge of anger in the face of a seemingly meaningless, absurd world. I feel you because I've been there, as has Sartre and Kierkegaard and the person that wrote Ecclesiastes. It's something called the existential attitude, and it's a point where all thinking, feeling people eventually find themselves. It's that vague sense of, is that all there is? As my culture, religion, economic system, school, government, parents, society, media, or all of the above been lying to me about life and meaning all these years? I say, what helped me was knowing that there are an awful lot of people in this world working hard to make life suck less. And you've got to become one of them. Because if you're not, you're ceding control of your world to others. And as a seeker of wisdom, you, not only others, but you too, have to work to balance the world's suckiness with its unsuckiness. Then I say, and one thing that really helped me understand this strange, random, senseless life is the wonderful Dr. Michael Shermer who wrote, we, you and I, are meaning-making, pattern-seeking creatures. We make things mean and always have. And there's your game changer, pal. We make things mean. There's no meaning out there other than what we give it. So yes, life sucks to the extent that you believe and want it to suck and what you're willing consciously to do about making it better. My son drained his bowl and said, yeah, I guess. And he turned and left the room. After all that brilliance I just gave him, that's all I got, yeah, I guess. But I guess that was fine. In fact, it was great, because I knew a little of what I said got through, and in parenting situations, as any mom or dad watching knows, a little, that's all you get. So for me that day, life was good, and it didn't suck. For Out of the Blue, I'm Bob Pondillo. 
For more information on MTSU News, be sure to go to mtsunews.com. That's it for this edition of Out of the Blue. Until next time, go blue. Join us in celebrating 100 years of MTSU history. Check out the Centennial Timeline at mtsu.edu slash centennial.